Hey everybody. Today we are going to tell the tale of two common aquarium parasites and in doing so we're also going to dispel the most unkillable and common myth surrounding ick or white spot disease that simply persists and persists and will not die. So let's start by talking about what this myth is, this untruth about the common parasite ick or white spot disease and that is that it always lives in our tank down in the substrate or wherever and it just lays in wait for the right conditions whether that's an unkempt tank or the fish are under stress or something there's always some sort of conditions that cause this outbreak of ick that happens suddenly and after long periods of not introducing any other fish or whatever you just suddenly have this outbreak of ick after months and months of, of everything's fine that's simply not true that's not how ick works so we are going to discuss how it works and see why that's not true. But there is something that does suddenly pop up in our aquariums if the conditions are right, and often those right conditions are the same kind of conditions that people describe when having these sudden outbreaks of ick. And so there is another disease that looks very, very much like ick, or at least can look very much like ick. In fact, if I were to show you these fish, and ask you what you thought these fish were suffering from, I would guess that unless you really, really knew what you were looking at and really understood what ick is, you would probably assume these fish have ick. Now, those fish were actually covered in something called epistylus. I don't know whether that is a protozoa or what type of fauna it is, but it's some little parasite that lives in our tank and does actually stay in our tanks all the time and then when the conditions are right we will have a big eruption about it but we'll get to that in a minute but you can be forgiven for thinking you've had this sudden outbreak of ick in your tank if that suddenly appears in your tank i know i went around and around and around desperately trying to fight an ick infection when it was actually this other stuff, epistylus, and that's how I wound up learning about all this. And the reason it's so important is that if you're treating for ick, that will actually make epistylus worse. You have to treat these two things very differently. And if you think it's ick and you're treating for ick, then you're going to make things worse. So being able to identify them is important. So very briefly, the way ick works, its life cycle, is we're going to start by having the white spot in the fish. Now that white spot is not on the fish, that white spot is actually just a little spot of irritated flesh. You can think about it almost like a pimple or something where this little parasite is bored into the fish's body and there's sort of a little white inflamed irritated spot where this little parasite bored in. So that's where we're gonna start. Once that parasite has eaten its fill, it then leaves the fish's body, it falls to the bottom of the tank, and encapsulates itself in a cyst where it begins reproducing. And it begins dividing and dividing and dividing until the cyst becomes so full that it ruptures open and loads thousands possibly of these little swimmers go back up into the water column looking for a fish to infect and begin feeding on. Now if it doesn't find a fish within a few days, it dies off. So it is very much a host dependent parasite. If you have all your fish die off because of a bad ick infection that you didn't take care of or something and you've got an empty tank, if you let that tank sit for a few weeks, you're safe to put fish in it again. The ick cannot survive in that tank without fish to live on. There is no dormant period or anything like that. At tropical temperatures, the ick life cycle goes through very quickly. Within about 10 days, it will go through its full life cycle. The only time it's susceptible to medication is when it's free swimming in the water, either when it leaves the fish and is falling to the bottom of the tank, or when it has erupted from the cyst and is now swimming back up looking for a host again. Uh, while it is in the fish and while it is in the cyst, it's pretty much impervious to any kind of medications you're going to put in the tank. But that's the, that's the life cycle of ick. So there is no way that if you've treated it and you've killed it off, there's no possibility that six months down the road it breaks out again. You would have to reintroduce this parasite into your tank. It does not simply live in the tank in some dormant state. But what does live in your tank, and not necessarily in a dormant state, but it lives in your tank in numbers that aren't really an issue. And it's this 
protozoa or whatever it is. Again, I'm not exactly sure what type of uh, fauna it is, but this parasite, we'll call it, it, because it can be a parasite on your fish. It's, I'm a little not 100% not comfortable calling it a parasite, but I'll explain why in a minute. Basically, it feeds off of bacteria in the water column, like the way a hydra might attach to your glass, and then it feeds off little stuff in the water column. Now, the difference with this stuff is, and I'm not even sure hydra might attach to your fish too. Hydra can be some nasty stuff, but that's a different video for a different time. Um, this epistylus can actually attach to the surface of your fish. And think of like the way a barnacle will attach to a ship. It's not feeding on the ship, it's simply using the, the ship is something to anchor to and then it's feeding off of stuff in the water column it's like a filter feeder so that's what this epistylus is doing it's not attacking your fish it's simply using your fish as a way to swim around the tank and get bacteria out of the water column now the problem is where it attaches the enzymes or secretions or whatever it's using to attach itself that begins irritating the skin of the fish and you can start having secondary infections on the fish itself, which in turn can cause bacterial infections, which in turn causes this epistylus that feeds on bacteria to sort of start this sort of feedback loop where you get this sort of snowball effect. And so the injury it's causing to the fish is actually causing more bacteria to build up, which causes more of this epistylus to grow, which causes more injury. And again, you just get this snowball where it can become really bad for your fish really quickly, even though this stuff's not attacking your fish per se. And so diagnosing it correctly is important because again, if you're treating for ick and you turn the water temperature up, this stuff thrives in warmer water temperatures. So if you do that and you treat it with ick medication, the medication's not gonna affect it, and then those warm water temperatures are gonna make it thrive. So some of the ways you can tell the difference between the two, is, and I don't know the whole life cycle of the epistylus, so I can't really get into that, but that is the way the epistylus functions. Again, it went, how it reproduces and whatnot, I don't know the details of that. But the difference is, and the way you can tell the difference between the two is, we'll start with ick. Ick is gonna be very, very small white spots, like little specks of salt all over the fish. It's going to be fairly evenly distributed, not necessarily perfectly evenly distributed, but fairly evenly distributed. You are not going to see ick on the actual eyeball covering of the fish, but you might see it around the eyeball, but you will not see ick on the eyeball itself. Uh, ick is also flush against the skin. It's, it's not going to be some sort of raised or fuzzy, fluffy texture. It's going to basically look like a white speck of paint or a white dot has been painted on the fish. It's going to be flush against the fish's surface. Epistylus, on the other hand, is... It can look fuzzy like a bacterial infection, I mean like a fungal infection, if it's growing a lot in one spot. And that's the other aspect of it, is it can grow in clumps and large areas, or it can start off on the tail and then spread across the fish, or you have a lot of it here and a lot of it here, but nothing in between. So the epistylus can have a very different appearance, but again, it can also have this fairly even coating. So when it looks fairly even and you're kind of trying to decide, look at the eyeballs, epistylus will grow over the eyeballs of the fish where it will not and the epistylus will have a raised or sort of fuzzy like texture if you can look down the length of the fish you'll see it's standing off of the side of the fish and it as it gets bigger it'll grow fuzzier and fuzzier and mound you know it'll look more and more like a, uh, a fungal infection as time goes on and so those are the key ways to tell the difference now as far as treating for ick you can use any kind of ick medication on the market. I like ick attack and I like ick x. And I'll actually tell you the reason I like ick x, and this is what I am talking about there. That can be found on my Amazon storefront. I'll leave a link down below. I will also leave a link to a very good article uh, where we actually got those photos. And you will be able to read about all this yourself if you want to go through all the minutia and details about epistylus. So the way we treat for ick is we use ick medication and pretty much all of them work. However, that ick attack, I mean, sorry, that ick X that I just showed you also cre uh, contains uh, malachite green. And malachite green will treat 
the epistylus. Uh, another way to treat for the epistylus is actually to take away the epistylus's food source. You can treat the tank for a bacterial infection. You can treat it with emycin or some other sort of antibacterial agent. Depending on how badly your fish is being affected by this, you may want to do that anyway for the sake of the fish. Uh, you probably want to salt your aquarium, won't have any impact on the epistylus at all, but salting your aquarium when your fish are under stress is always good to sort of take some of the stress off your fish. I'm not going to explain why right now, but putting a little salt in there uh, will help your fish. Won't, won't help cure the epistylus or ick but it will help take some of the stress off your fish. So a little bit of salt is always a good idea. But malachite green is the only treatment I know that will actually kill the epistylus. Again, taking away its food source with removing the bacteria, doing water changes, doing a, uh, maybe a heavy salt bath that will, will kill the stuff off. I'm not sure about that. A heavy salt bath, if you know, a 15 minute uh, dip for your fish might kill this epistylus off. That's usually a good way of killing off a freshwater uh, parasite. You can put it in a high concentration of salt for 15 minutes, uh, which again is different than adding a pinch of salt to your aquarium. But look into it if you're any bit on the fence, not sure about whether what you're seeing is ick or epistylus. There's plenty of research out there. There's plenty of websites and stuff that you can do if you just type in a few keywords. Again, I'll leave that article down below. It's a really good article and it's really helpful. And it's just really important to be able to tell what you're diagnosing. If you're treating the wrong thing, you can do a lot of harm. Again, if you mistake this epistylus for a fungal infection and you start treating for a fungal infection, you're just going to be pounding your head against the wall of why you keep putting this medicine in there and nothing is happening and it just keeps getting worse and worse and you're not treating for the right thing. And so knowing what you're treating is really important. So I hope that was helpful to somebody. By all means, leave your comments, questions, anything like that down below. Again, don't forget, I'm going to put a link down below. I probably attached a card early on in the beginning of this video uh, just so you didn't miss it. So thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Don't forget, I do a live stream every Friday night and Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.